Right, so these are these uh, the dark these dark lanes that they were talking about. That's just where the, the dust is so thick that uh, light, that visible light is completely obscured. Um, all right, then let's see. So uh, they uh, mentioned the alpha lines as, as well, that those tend to be red. Um, or they, they are red. The H alpha lines are, in fact, the, the red transition, um, the, the red light, the transition between the N equals 3 to N equals 2. All right. Um, so how, what, what exactly is going on with these nebulae? So, so th this is actually um, a, uh, a good example. So within the nebula, there are, um, let's, this particular nebula would have um, some hot stars. Um, you know, these, uh, there, there's actually nebula, like for example, the Orion Nebula, M M42, where, where you start, there are new stars that are forming. And currently forming, and, and the, the the gas and dust is um, very obscure around around them, um, but it, it is it is um, it's an an emission nebula. The the the, the, uh, the gas and, and dust get hot enough to actually emit light. All right, and then you know, let's say that for example that that, that light passes through a um, a dust cloud um, be between us and the and and you know the the uh, the emission nebula. Um, what will happen is that uh, the, the light it will the, the you know it, it would be let's say all the colors of the rainbow if you just think about visible light. Um, what will happen is the dust cloud um, this this dust cloud right here um, would uh, let let's say reflect some of the light. Um, you know it's not it's not going to reflect all of it, but it tends to reflect um, the blue light. And so the, the, those those are what we tend to call reflection nebula. And, and remember, it, it's always um, the, the the reason for whether it's reflection or absorption um, or scattering has to do with the the size of the, either the atoms or the molecules that make up the clouds. Right? The size is it, it is the size. Um, of the molecules and or the or the atoms, um, and and how the, how that size would um, interact with the, the the wavelength of the photons, right? The, the you know, fo like for example, if if this if this cloud is made up of um, let me point to this one. So this this cloud right here is made up of mostly um, you know uh, molecules that that that. Are about the same size as as red light. Let's say, in for example, in, you know, um, 700 nanometers. Then what's going to happen is, um, the you know, the the, uh, the the red energy that's coming towards this cloud is going to either be absorbed or or um, um, well, mostly absorbed actually. And and so the the, the only thing that would remain in this reflection nebula would be the blue light. So um, let's see. So uh, here's some examples of some emission nebula. They're, they're, they're just showing you some pictures here. Um, let's see. Uh, strong interaction between the nebula and the stars within it. Um, you, we see um, this. So the, this is actually this one in the in the lower um, right hand side. This is a very very famous um, star forming region in in the um, in. Uh, in, in the Milky Way galaxy, anyhow, uh, it's, it's it's sometimes it's known as the pillars of creation. Um, this was actually one of the very first uh, ba back in the early 1990s. Um, you could actually see people walking around with T-shirts um, with these with with this picture on it, um, and and. Uh, you rarely see people with that now, and it was because uh, the, the 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 Hubble Space Telescope took, you know, an, an, an exceptional picture that that we had never seen before of this particular nebula, and um, and and you know, it was it was uh, um, you know a really big deal. Anyhow, um, one of the things that you you'll notice is the fuzziness around the pillars. And that's due to what's called uh, photon evaporation. So what, basically, it's it's the same kind of thing like that you would see um, when when the fog 
I mean, it's, it's different. It's a, it's a different phenomenon, or a slightly different phenomenon. But you know, imagine like a thick, foggy day, and and you know, it's it's very early in the morning, and then as the sun gets higher and higher in the sky, of course, the fog begins to clear, and and so what's what's happening is, um, in 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 this particular uh, instance with the, the, the this haziness uh, around the pillars. Uh, is that the 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 light within it is um, basically um, breaking up some of the some of the gas and dust, um, like the photons themselves are, you know, n not only are they carrying energy away, but they they're moving some of the gas and dust away from the um, away from this, the pillars. I mean, not in not in a instantly noticeable way, but um, that that's kind of just the haziness that you see at the edge. All right, anyhow, let's move on. Um, so the emission, um, let, let's see, the so emission nebulas tend to consist mostly of hydrogen and helium and then a little bit of, um, you know, heavier things like, you know, like dust, for example. Um, and one of the things that we find, and this is a really bad name, okay, so th these are called forbidden transitions. Like, the, the probably the most famous one is um, in, in, uh, it's it's like a greenish light that 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 comes from oxygen. Um, it, it, there's nothing forbidden about these. Okay, um, if if there happens to be some oxygen in in these um, in these nebula, uh, what happens is there's there's so much of it that the, these rare that that would be a better description of it. So, so there, there would be like these very rare transitions. The transitions I'm talking about, of course, are between, you know, electrons in, a, in, a, in an excited state dropping down to a less excited state, not, not necessarily straight to the ground state, but dropping down to this, this less excited state. And so um, for, for oxygen, for example, uh, we don't see that green, the, the, that green light coming from oxygen um, very often in our laboratories. And so when people first saw this, they thought maybe there was some special, um, you know, uh, atom or molecule um, that was not found on Earth. In fact, um, they even gave it, gave it a name. Um, and, and in fact, it, it, this, this actually had precedent. Um, remember, uh, with, with uh, the sun, we, we saw these um, these spectral lines that we never found on Earth, um, and and in fact uh, that 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 atom became known as helium. Right? Uh, of course, there is helium on the Earth. It's just that uh, we didn't we didn't um, know about it uh, because it's you know it's very hard. It, you know, unless you're trying uh, to to find helium, uh, you know that. This is over a hundred years ago. Uh, p people just didn't have helium readily available, and so uh, you know it got it got its name because the spectrum was found in the sun. So, so the, you know the, these these forbidden transitions. Um, when people first started looking at them, they, they said, "Oh, you know, there must be some other you know form of of, of matter there," and um, you know, just like helium, it, I think it was called nebulum. But but it it turned out it wasn't it wasn't some exotic um, element or, or molecule that had never been observed. It was just um, a transition that is very unlikely to to occur um, in in the in the limited number of, of uh, atoms that, that we were looking at. Um, you know nowadays we can we can force. Uh, Oxygen to to undergo those transitions, and so it's it's not it's not that um, unusual. But back then it was, and so that's what they're called forbidden transitions. Um, all right, so uh, oh yes, here here's the thing about the oxygen. All right, so th there's the you know there's the famous belt of Orion. There's uh, Betelgeuse. That's the Ry star Rigel. That's Beltrix right there. And the, so the underneath the belt um, there is this hazy region called. M42, the, the Orion Nebula, and, it, and there's actually, um, this is a star forming region. Um, I think it's like 1500 uh, light years away, something like that. Um, anyhow, um, 
This is, this is a wonderful example of an emission nebula, and notice there is, um, you know, this greenish color uh, that, you know, for, for some of these so-called forbidden transitions of, of the element oxygen. I, again, they're not forbidden, it's just a name that got stuck with these things. And, you know, <laughs> the, the way sometimes this works is certain names in science stick even though they're not applicable anymore. Um, let's see. So the so now now we're going to turn to the darker clouds um, that that we see, and of course you know you, you can see there's some d darker regions even uh, near the the emission nebula, like like the Orion Nebula, for example. I mean, there's these very dark regions, and so um, and and then and then of course there are other regions where we just you know you look out you see a bunch of stars and then you don't see any stars at all behind it. All right, so so that these are the these are these dark regions. Um, we find that the average temperature of stars and uh, sorry of these dark clouds, um, and and these clouds are mostly dust material, um, are only a few tens of so you know maybe maybe 30, 40, 50, you know Kelvin, um, and uh, what happens is they they are almost all absorbing uh, visible light. Right, so this has to do with, of course, the size of the the uh, the, mole the molecules that make them, make them up. Right, that the they're they're um, the, the, these things are of the size that that is visible light from 700 to to 400 nanometers, and so we're not seeing any light behind them. But radio waves will pass right through. Right, you know, radio waves, um, you know, from the stars behind. Or even radio waves from from the the actual dust clouds, these dark dust clouds. They're, they're dark in the sense they're dark in the visible part of the spectrum, but um, in other parts of the spectrum, they're not. Um, here's a, here's one uh, called um, the the Ophiuchus uh, dust cloud. This is just in, in this particular constellation. Um, let's see. Um, this is a very bright star, Antares. Uh, another, you know, the, remember I mentioned these the 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 messier objects. There's M M4, for example. I guess that's the fourth one uh, Charles Messier found. I uh, notice there's a dark nebula right here. There's a reflection nebula. And this is actually really good. Uh, I I can see why they use this picture because you're seeing, um, you know, e emission nebula, um, a reflection nebula, and then dark nebula as well. So all in the same picture. So this is all, this is actually all in the same region of the sky. Um, Ophiuchus is o over by uh, Scorpio, the, the constellation Scorpio. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, this is the famous uh, <laughs> this is the famous Horsehead Nebula. Um, it's again, this is a dark region. It happens to look like a horse's head, and so that's how it's got its name. Um, there's different ones. I think. Uh, let me think of some of them. Um, there's the, the spider nebula, which of course would look kind of like a spider. Um, there's the dumbbell nebula. I'm just trying to think of some other ones. Um, anyhow, all right. Uh, what else? Do we have anything else to say about that? It's it's just it's just famous because it's kind of the shape of a horse's head. Um, all right. So so the thing is. Um, as it says here, light from distant stars um, can 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 pass uh, through more than one nebula, and and it's even possible for us, for for astronomers, to sort out um, whether the nebula is from from a star or from um, or whether whether the light is from the star or from a nebula. And the reason is, if if you remember, um, stars have much broader um, uh, absorption lines, right? And so we, we can distinguish between um, absorption lines due to due to stars or stellar absorptions, stellar lines, and um, the narrow ones that are due to, to the clouds. Remember, the clouds, um, they're you know they're made of just a few things, and there's not a great deal of turbulence the way there are in stars. So you, you're getting a very narrow absorption so so it's it's not and, and then like in a star of course there's lots of 
there's lots of absorption that can take place because you know you have things that are rotating and uh, moving at different at different speeds.